Hello, this is Thomas K4SWL. If you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activation videos. And actually, today I won't be K4SWL. I'm going to be VY2SW, Victor Yankee 2 um, Sierra Whiskey. And I'm heading out to a park. I'm in Bay Como, Quebec right now. In fact, I just this is the hotel I'm staying in, the Manoir, uh, L'Hotel Manoir is the name of it. Nice hotel if you're staying here. I think it's the oldest permanent building in our establishment in uh, Bay Como. Really nice little hotel though. Uh, staying here with my family. We're leaving this morning. We're getting ready to go on um, a few days camping. And I want to do a park activation this morning. So that's where we're going to head to um, the park. And I can't remember the name of the park. There are several different names for it because there's a it's sort of a conservation area and uh, so it's, it goes under a, a lot of different names but basically um, it's Victor Echo dash or VE dash 0054 and um, I hope I can activate it whoops I hope I'll be able to activate it today um, it's early in the morning uh, for me to do an activation it's about uh, 7.15 right now local and um, I plan to um, hop on the air I hope to get my 10 contacts and head back I'd like to do more I'll stay as long as I can but the truth is um, I need to um, get back so we can pack up and head to our next destination I don't want to make the family too late uh, they, no one else came with me today we actually went to this park yesterday uh, late and I kind of scoped it out a little bit um, just to see if I could find a spot to set up um, and uh, I think I found one I think well there are a couple of different spots where I could set up uh, it's a it's a beautiful beautiful park uh, but but the trees I'll, I'm planning to use a wire antenna just because I sort of want the uh, flexibility of uh, being able to hop around a couple different bands at least 40 and 20 uh, conditions have been so miserable lately that um, I'm a little concerned because this is early in the morning. Not as many people will be on the air right now. I did put out a little uh, message on QRPer.com and on Twitter asking people to please uh, spot me if they see me <laughs> um, uh, because I, it would it would be nice. I mean, I think I, I can spot myself up here. I believe I have cell phone coverage up here. But um, it would just kind of be nice to um, know that uh, some people are watching out for me. Let's see, I hope you're able to see all this. Um, okay, let's see. I think I'll take a left here. Yes, yeah, so I'll take a left here. Let me move this camera up just a little bit so you can see a bit more. There we go. Baycomb is a beautiful town. Uh, we really love just looking around the the bay here and all the different sites. It's just it's really pretty. It's kind of a you know a lonely town up here. There aren't that many um, other you know larger cities around here. It's pretty uh, um, I guess you'd say isolated in in some respects, uh, but it's a it's a big it's a big place for up here. I think it's really the last stop, especially if you we plan to at some point go up the uh, Labrador Highway, not this year, and uh, Bay Como is kind of your last stop before you head north um, up to Labrador City. It's something, it's on my bucket list. I've always wanted to do that, but you gotta have the right vehicle, the right everything to kind of make that happen. It's a very long and lonely trip, <laughs> so. Um, but this part of Quebec is just insanely beautiful. Uh, the St. Lawrence and uh, the geography, the geology up here is really something else. Not like what I'm used to in the mountains of Western North Carolina. Here we go. Yeah, this isn't going to be, there's not much of a hike into this. Uh, there will be some mosquitoes around. I'll need to spray myself down before I pop out there. The, um, the views up there are pretty amazing. 
it's just a little just kind of like a regular trail a lot of rock I thought about using my um, whoops I need to be in this lane that's right I thought about using my chameleon impasse light but uh, frankly it's really rocky up there parts of it are just about solid rock uh, so I've decided instead to just uh, use a wire antenna but the trees aren't they're just not very tall and uh, I'm either going to deploy an infed half wave which will be kind of low to the ground or I'll deploy my random wire antenna I'm leaning toward the random wire antenna right now and the reason why is I think that the infed half wave the, the trees just are not very tall and I'm afraid that if I put up the infed half wave it'll just basically act as a nivis antenna and I'm not entirely sure that that would be the best approach um, where I am there just aren't a lot of uh, other amateur radio operators you know in this area <clears throat> if I were in North Carolina I think it'd be a pretty safe bet because there'd be everybody um, you know in the surrounding states but up here they're just the density of amateur radio operators is much lower I really need to throw my signal a little further and I don't know uh, maybe or maybe not I don't know if the uh, random wire will do it for me or not but um, here we go I think we're getting up to the top here well a park And start to get things going. Take a right. Is it right here? It's right here, yes. This is the only Hoda entity uh, anywhere really close to uh, Bay Como. Uh, there's some, I think there are a few further up the road. There's some um, between Bay Como and Tadasac. Uh, just a a couple if I remember correctly. One of them is fairly inaccessible. It's an island. I've had one cup of coffee this morning. I didn't want to wake my family and there's a coffee maker in the room and it's like a little Keurig sort of coffee press sort of thing or what are you going to call it? They use little, the little cups, little K cups. And it was dark in the room and uh, I picked up the one for hot chocolate and I made it. <laughs> it was kind of a surprise to wake up um, and uh, think I was having, think I was, I was about to drink some nice uh, coffee and it just turned out to be hot chocolate. Okay, that's the path I'm gonna go down up here. I'll just park here back in. See, there's an overnight camper there. Just look at the scenery. I mean, this is so beautiful out here. I'm pretty sure that there'll be people out walking this trail in the morning. So I'll probably, probably run into some people. Doesn't look busy right now, but I bet it will be. Okay, let's see, let's get everything together. And we'll just scope this guy out here, so. Here we go. Before I head over to the trail and find a spot to set up, just look at this. Isn't this amazing? The view from up here is just fantastic. I won't have this kind of view from where I'm operating because there are trees around, but basically um, this is the St. Lawrence and uh, this is all part of Bay Como over here in this area. I would like to operate, I wouldn't mind operating at like one of these picnic tables or something, but it's not really, from what I can tell, inside the uh, park. And this is really difficult. I found that some of the parks in Quebec, uh, the POTA system has to put a pinpoint on a map showing where the park is. And often the pinpoint's not quite right. It may have to do with like where... I think uh, maybe administrative buildings are located and stuff. Well, this one actually shows the pinpoint in the right area um, and the name, which I don't even, I don't have it here in front of me right now. Uh, the name of this reserve uh, that's here is um, on the POTA site uh, for Victor Echo-0054. And uh, I had to do a little research. It actually was very easy to find. Uh, this is a nice hike. Uh, the community knows about it. And I think it's called uh, Parc des Glaciers or something. This, uh, I believe, which is housed in this old church. It's a beautiful church. I'll try to put some photos in um, my uh, 
field report at qrp.com. In fact, you should always, always look up um, my field reports on qrp.com. I put way more time into them than I do the videos. My videos are very simple. Only edits I have in them is where I have to take the uh, files off of my camera and patch them together into one long video. I don't edit anything out. So um, it doesn't really take me that long. It can take me a long time to upload it uh, if I don't have good internet service, but that's about it. But I'll show pictures of this uh, church. Anyway, let's move over here. And uh, I put on some what my Alaskan friends call bug dope. A little bit of uh, insect repellent. I know my buddy uh, Jim, N4JAW, is also on the air at the same time. He's doing an early morning activation as well. For him, he's doing it to beat the heat. He is in Kentucky. I would love to work him. I just don't know if there's going to be much of a path open to there or not. We'll just have to find out. But anyway, from my research, looking online, looking at park maps, looking at all that stuff, I don't have to go very deep into these woods to be on the park property. And uh, frankly, I'm not going to go very deep into these woods anyway right now because I need, uh, I need to make this as quick as I can. But I suspect this may not be a very quick activation. It's nice. Um, this is a prime example of why POTA is so cool for families. My wife and my daughters are all amateur radio operators. Um, none of them are into POTA like I am in terms of wanting to operate. One of them, one of my daughters, uh, is way more interested and she likes to hop on the air and stuff. Um, but they they like they know it's sort of my thing and when we go out uh, they'll sometimes hop on the air but not for very long this morning they, they want to stay in bed uh, for as long as they can and uh um, i may try to work them simplex uh from the hotel i think maybe if i walk around that way to the other side of the mountain i may be able to hit them from hit them at the hotel from here I think yesterday, this is about the best tree um, out here for what I want to do. And I'm hoping I can sit up there on the rock somewhere. The tree is not terribly tall, but it should do the trick. Down here, uh, I can probably, probably go over to where I have a little bit of a line of sight to the hotel, but this is a really nice um path and we walked a bunch of it yesterday sort of late yesterday evening and conditions were so bad i didn't even bother uh, doing this but what i was about to say is cool thing about poda for us see my long shadow here cool thing about poda for us is it often gives you an opportunity to explore places you would have never otherwise explored oh, need to pick up some trash on the way out here i see um this is a prime example. It's a really beautiful site I would have never thought about coming to otherwise. So my goal is, I am pretty darn sure, I think I'm just gonna throw up the random wire antenna. I think that's what I'm gonna do. If I have problems or it's not performing very well, then I'll reconsider, but I think that's what I'll do. Okay, let's get this antenna up. And hop on the air. So the tricky thing about this tree is I'm going to throw the line from the back coming up over, if I'm lucky. Um, the tricky thing is it's very difficult to get up behind there to get a good angle to come across the top of the tree. Um, so we'll just have to see how that goes. It'll probably take me a few tries, but this is a pretty easy line to deploy. So hey, we'll go for it. Let's go ahead and get this started.
know what? I'm gonna make that work. This was incredibly difficult. It's one of the tougher spots I've had to deploy an antenna. And it looks good. I, it probably looks great on camera, actually, <laughs> when you can't see in three dimensions. But basically, I don't want to go up into all that, um, you know, brush and everything. Because uh, I can't really, I'm not tall enough that I can be really high above it to swing my um, throw line. Um, to get it across and it is just barely hanging in the tips of that tree right there it could fall down on me as i'm deploying the antenna you know hey so it took me a few tries because i was trying to push myself as far off as i could in there but i couldn't get my regular swing action or anything if i were left-handed this wouldn't have been too difficult but i'm not really i'm not left-handed because <laughs> it would have been on this side of me as opposed to in the bush uh, so we'll just have to deal with this and this antenna is so lightweight i don't think it'll be a problem i hope it won't We'll just give it a go and see. Okay, let's see if I can get this up without too many problems here. Here we go. Oops. I'll be using Joshua's in, uh, random wire antenna which is about as lightweight as you can get with a wire antenna. Main trick will be, will the, the line itself as I'm putting it up, will that be a, pose a problem, but hopefully not. I'll deploy a 17 foot counterpoise. I have to go ahead and get that set up now. Go ahead and hook this up. It doesn't take much branch to actually hold this antenna, but <laughs> what you don't want to have happen is you accidentally tug it a little too much and it pulls at the end of that branch. That's the tricky part. The branch itself is plenty strong to do this. Okay, let's see if we can pull this up without knocking the antenna, the line down. has to go here. Not much, but I have to bring that up above that branch. It's wanting to catch a little bit right now, so we'll have to see. Hope I won't knock it down. I just have to find my counterpoise. I thought I had it attached, but I just don't have it attached. So I just need to find that really quickly. <laughs> this wire is so tiny. It's so hard to find. Okay, 
all I'm going to do is go ahead and find the wire, attach it, and we'll hop on the air. Okay, I just set up my chair. I'll just have to put up the radio now and get things going. Yeah, what I was talking about earlier, you probably couldn't hear me. I'm not mic'd up or anything like that. I'm not using external mics. Um, the counterpoise uh, for this antenna, um, I wanted to have it hooked up and frankly, I put it on the ground and I couldn't see it because this is really thin wire. Um, then I remembered it has one of these clips on the end and so it wasn't a problem at actually at all. I don't have this clip hooked up right now. I don't really need it. I'm not in strong winds or anything like that. Let's hope that this random wire does a trick. It's not going to be the random wire's fault if it doesn't because frankly, conditions have been miserable. Yesterday we were hit with a CME. That's one of the reasons I didn't bother doing an activation really late in the day. Um, it was so late in the day when we were up here that I would have been fighting, uh, knocking into the next UTC day. So I just decided to do it this morning. So we'll see how this goes. Sun is super bright and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm working on here. It'll be strong shadows, but let's get everything deployed and get on the air. Okay, I'm back and I got most everything set up here. Uh, let's see. I will. So I've already got hammers set up, hypothetically. Um, <laughs> I probably by the time I moved off of this, it will have forgotten most of everything. I put in a fake call K4 just to hold its place. And I find that by doing that, a lot of times it'll save my information when I hop off the screen. I think I'll start on 20 meters. I don't know why. I, I never do 20 meters this early in the morning. So we'll just give this a go and see. Um, let me move up. I'm not hearing much on the bands though, and that's a little scary. We'll sit here for just a second. And what I'll do now is hop back over here and try to spot myself. Move the power back down to 5 watts for right now. I'm going to get this started as I spot myself, add spot, call activator call. Hopefully after I do this one spot, it will continue to spot me then if the RBN functionality is working. Make sure it's pulling up the right one. Yep. Manicugan. Biosphere Reserve. Comments. CW. Spot. It looks like it did it. Let's just hope we can hear somebody now. See, this hopped off the screen again. Let's see if it saved anything. I'll put it back on 20 meters. There we go. I missed all that. Wow, he's strong. Great to get you in here, Brian. VE2, okay. Is that a two? <laughs> okay.
Ó. Too many things at once. Okay. friend here. Oh, you can see him. <laughs> okay. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry, I got a reset.
It's getting so messy. <laughs> in the logs. I don't know if I've ever, have I logged you before, John? I'm pretty sure I have, but not recently. This will give me a second to catch my breath. Well, I've got 11 logged so far, so this is a done and done activation. Oh, good. I've gotten an E4TN. A lot of.
that, that, that last station just popped up. I got enough uh, signal it popped up, and it said that he's in Granite Falls, North Carolina. He used to live in Granite Falls, North Carolina. I recognize the call, actually. CQ call here. This is going fast enough that I may be able to kind of stay a little bit longer than I thought. I'd like to move around to another frequency if I could. especially hot here at all. In fact, it's really pleasant, but the sun is like heating me up. We've had incredible weather up here. Okay, let's try. Let me look around here a little bit. First of all, I want to see if I can find my buddy Jim on the bands. If he happens to be operating right now. So I'm going to look through the spots here and see if I see M4JAW. Those are all QRT. I don't see him on here right now. Okay. Um, let's see. You know, there are like no... There really aren't many... Um, really aren't many stations on the air right now. I'm going to do a little signal sideband if I can. So that's 20 meters CW. Boy, I tell you what, my handwriting went to pot. I don't have quite a good angle to write here, and so, sorry, I got sweat on me. <laughs> the sun, like I said, it is very pleasant out here today, but the sun is beaming down on me. It's wonderful, though. This is like perfect activation weather. Yeah, my hand's not at a good angle, and so my writing is really messy. I hope you can actually see this. Okay. Go ahead and hit the ATU. Now I, don't, now, I don't have my mic with me, so I'm using the internal mic here. This is frequency in use. This is, K, this is Victor Yankee 2 Sierra Whiskey. I'm going to move this up to 10 watts now. There we go. Okay, um... Is this frequency in use? This is Victor Yankee 2, Sierra Whiskey. I turned on the auto notch. Okay, now that is calling CQ. So what I'm going to do is go over here. First of all, refresh the page. And then respot myself, SSB, and change the frequency to 286. Someone's just tuning up all over the place right there, so I don't know if 
anybody can hear me, this is using an auto notch filter. I don't do this much because I'm using CW, but auto notch is wonderful for knocking out those noises like that. I'd like to get an SSB station if at all possible. SSB is actually harder for me to log in two places. It's a pain, and in fact, the reason I miss so many calls is because I'm having to give my attention to this phone in order to do logging live, and it's a pain. But I mean, I have to say the Hammers app works pretty darn well, and it's worth it when I go back home and I don't have to transcribe a full um, log. I really like that. So this is calling CQ, and it's just doing CQ POTA, CQ POTA. This is Victor Yankee 2 Sierra Whiskey calling CQ for Parks on the Air. But it can't use the monitor while I've got the internal mic engaged because it gives it feedback, so it cuts it off. So you can't hear the monitor. I do have the preamp on for 20 meters. Just doing a quick check to make sure I've got everything done properly. I'd like to get somebody. Maybe somebody will be out there. <laughs> I'm sitting there plugging away, and this dog comes up to me. That, this such a sweet dog. It just came up, and it nosed me, and it wanted to be petted, and so I petted it. It was just such a cute dog. I think the fellow that was walking past here, though, was looking at me like, what in the world is this guy doing, sitting up on a rock with Morse code piping away? I get a lot of those looks um, uh, at parks. I would have talked to him, actually, but he, he seemed like he was just wanting to move on and do some hiking. His dog was the greeting party. I got a soft spot for any kind of animal. Hazel would love being up here. Oh, this is an all-time new one. Did I mention that before? So this is an Atno Park. This has never been activated before. Which is a little surprising because it's basically the only park uh, here in the Bay Como area, and it's very accessible. I mean, very, very accessible. Kilo 3, Echo Sierra. Kilo 3, Echo Sierra. Great to hear your voice and work you uh, two different modes today. You've got about a 5 by 9 here at Victor Echo 0054 QSL. Hey, thank you so much, Brian. I really appreciate it. And it's, it's always great to work you. I seem to be able to work you if I'm in North Carolina or Quebec or wherever I am. Hey, 7-3 is my friend. Have yourself a wonderful day. Uh, 7 QRZ, this is Victor Yankee 2, Sierra Whiskey for Parks on the Air. Well, at least I've got an SSB contact. That's really nice. Awesome getting you in there, Brian. This really, this is such a voice saver having voice me message keying. You know, I may go up a little higher in the band actually, because 20 meters was short. I worked main from here on 20 meters. That's not a super long. Well, I don't know. It kind of is. We're kind of further north than I'm. Nine, India, Charlie, Papa, India, Charlie, Papa. Kilo nine, India, Charlie, Papa. You're about a five by five here at Victor Echo zero zero five four QSL. Roger, roger on the 5-5 five, five in Indiana. Hey, thank you very much, my friend, and seven threes. Thank you for being there, QRZ, this is Victor Yankee 2, Sierra Whiskey for Parks on the Air. Uh, this is Kilo 9, India, Charlie Poppins. Do you have a question? I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, I was just uh, calling QRZ, that's all. Roger, the call is Kilo 9, India, Charlie Papa, 5-5, five, five, Indiana. Thank you. Roger, roger, my friend. I've got you in the logs. Hey, seven threes, and have a wonderful week. This will give me a second to log him. It's harder for me to log with single sideband. I'm gonna move. I think I'm gonna move up to seventeen meters and do a CW. I'll do two more calls.
Ooh, and while I'm thinking about it, I'll take some photos. Okay. Okay, I'm going to QSY to the 17 meter band. This is Victor Yankee 2 Sierra Whiskey. Okay, we'll hope for a few more here, and then I'll do a little hunting. I didn't see Jim on the band yet for a while, so I'd like to try to reach a couple of my friends in Ohio, but it doesn't look like there's much of a path there. I've been working them on 20 meters lately, so... I don't know. Oh, I need to spot myself. Well, actually, you know, maybe it'll spot me now. Let's see what it does here. Yeah, spotted me. That's nice. Thank you, Poda. <laughs> Maybe I can work a couple European stations. I don't know. I know why it is why it's harder for me to work at SSB. It's because I don't have a canned single sideband voice message that I can send when I say... Roger, you're five by nine, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like I can do with CW, I can actually do that. I haven't been doing it um, at all because I've been thanking people for their states and provinces and things. So I'll send back thank you and I'll put, you know, something in there. Um, but I'm able to, I don't know, I'm able, to, uh, maybe, maybe the exchange takes slightly longer. I'm not really sure, but it, it's harder for me to um, log here on the side, log here on paper. Very strong signal, my friend. Still pretty weak there at his end. Great to get you on all these bands. Thought I heard somebody else in there. Got 18 logs so far. I can probably operate about 15 more minutes before I need to go. I need my other cup of coffee. I'm hoping maybe I can hit Mike from here too. K eight R A T. I got Eric on uh, 17 meters. Maybe I can get Mike on 17.
before. There you're right. Yes, Alabama. Mm hmm. Good to get you in here. There we go. I'll just start going. Maybe I'll get you here in just a second. Uh, it's probably conditions right now. There we go. Maybe I did that wrong.
That's a strong signal. mosquito. <laughs> I'm trying to get the mosquitoes while I'm doing this. <laughs> That's the thing about, I guess, activating along the north coast here. I did a very poor job hitting him too while I was trying to hold my radio and my logbooks and everything else. Okay, I've gotten 27. I'm going to hop off here very soon. Oh, nice. get you to get you in the logs there maybe i'll hear you here in a second I, my signal must have faded on you and, and vice versa <laughs> okay just one more and that's it i promise that's it i need to pack up here we've got to head off to our next camping site well we didn't camp last night but we'll be camping tonight tomorrow night okay Okay, I'll turn that off. Nice. Okay, good. So I got a total, I had a total of 27 contacts. Very pleased with that. Couldn't have asked for better. Um, actually, worked out really well. So I tell you what, I'm going, I'm not going to film the rest of this. I've probably made this video so long right now that it'll take me forever to upload it. But um, 
I will um, hop off here and uh, uh, head back to the hotel, pack up my things, um, uh, take the wife and uh, my daughters to a really nice, um, hopefully, camping site. We hope to do a little whale watching while we're there, which should be really nice for the next couple days. But I'm going to be off-grid. In fact, and so sadly, there's not a poda park within sight of this particular area where we're camping, and there's not even really a soda site that's accessible. Um, so I won't be doing a lot of uh, activating there, but I will be doing a little bit of chasing, hopefully, um, because I plan to set up. We'll be totally off-grid, so uh, it'll be really nice uh, to just hang out there with no technology or anything other than my radios. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. It was great to... I really... I just had this in my mind. I really wanted to activate a park in Bay Como. Um, we've been wanting to come here for a long time. It's in a bit of... From where we've been staying in, in uh, Quebec in um, saint ferreau la neige is the name of a little town near saint anne de beaupre uh, It's about a five-hour drive up here. So, um, you know, it's not... Not a short drive, <laughs> but we came all the way up here. We're going to go almost halfway back, not quite, uh, to do a little camping there near Tadesac. And um, it's just been, it's been really rewarding. In fact, just on the way up here, the little ferry ride that goes across the Saguenay River, we got to see a pod of belugas crossover, which was really fun. Um, there's just so many things up here. I love this part of Quebec. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me today on this long, rambly <laughs> conversation. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, if you get a chance, it wouldn't hurt to subscribe to the channel. I rarely think to ask for anybody to do that. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Um, feel free to comment. I try to handle the comments as best I can uh, with the time I have available. And um, if you get a chance, go out and play a little bit of radio and try to help somebody else if they're starting their radio journey. Uh, because we should all just treat each other with kindness, right? Because all we got in this old world is each other. Hey, until next time, seven threes.